he shares his life with others and he brings others joy. And helping the voiceless speak up, the tools some of the more than one million young Americans diagnosed with autism are being given to help them communicate. Today is World Autism Awareness Day. It's estimated that one in 68 children have some form of autism in the U.S. Every year, about 50,000 of those autistic kids turn 18. Parents say they enter a world that is less forgiving and less supportive. John Terrett met several autistic adults who are learning now how to integrate into their communities. You ready? Ready. One, two, three. For 26-year-old Michael Brenner, music may be the way he communicates best. As an autistic adult, one of his many talents is singing scat in different languages completely spontaneous. You gotta tell me what you need and what you want to be. You would never think that somebody with autism could do that, but Michael is superb at doing it. It's communicating in ways that most people find normal. Hey, well done, Michael. That's doing great. That doesn't come in any way naturally to Michael. Autism is, is known as a, a social communication disorder. One of the things that's uh, central to autism is having trouble understanding, drawing inferences about what another person thinks and feels. We, we take for granted how quick and easy it is for us. Dr. Jeffrey Fox runs Abilities First, one of a number of agencies helping autistic adults live as independently as possible, like assisting 22-year-old Paul with shopping. What else would you like to go get? With a recent Centers for Disease Control study showing that the number of individuals identified as autistic is on the rise, those who work with the syndrome say society must change to accept autistic adults into the community. People with autism interpret the world differently. I think what's most important is for employers to understand there's value in what folks can do, and we may need at times to look beyond some of the, uh, the, the atypical behaviors. While Paul is gaining lifestyle skills through shopping, Michael works on a farm during the week. Scoop it down here. There you go. All right, good job. He also has a small job. I did this drawing many years ago. Eric is one of Michael's housemates. A 42-year-old man with autism, he's also a gifted artist. What may seem like a simple conversation for most people is something Eric has to work on constantly. Says I can hardly make out with that. It's also something Michael struggled with early on. The biggest surprise with my son, who couldn't even be in a room with other people, is that he now enjoys being with people and that he gives to others. <laughs> Proof is in this video. Michael singing and dancing with a group of senior citizens, an outreach program organized by Dr. Muir. We're so used in our culture to judging things by our standards and our sense of normality. We're so used, it's so ingrained in us, we don't even realize we're doing it. Back at home, Michael writes to his sister, Rachel. Dear Rachel, how are you? I'm f fine, f thank you. People with autism, they have their own version of reality, their own version of normality. And it's not better than ours, and it's not worse than ours. And people with autism have an enormous amount to offer us. I'm the best day of my life. Yeah. Cool. John Terrett, Al Jazeera. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Dr. Robert Melillo specializes in autism. He joins us from Dallas, Texas this morning. Good morning, doctor. Autism Good diagnoses morning. have been on the rise as of late. Let's take a look at the numbers. Back in 1999, we were looking at a ratio of 1 in 10,000 school-aged children diagnosed with autism. In 2004, that climbed to 1 in 1,000. And then two years ago, it was 1 in 88. Right now, it's 1 in 68. Why are we seeing those numbers increase? Well, what you'll hear a lot of is that people will say that part of it is that we're better at diagnosing it. 
Um, in my book that I wrote last year, I really examined this, and I showed that maybe 40%, 45% of the increase for going from 1 in 10,000 to now 1 in 68 or 1 in 42 boys uh, can be explained really through improved diagnosis or early recognition or changes in diagnostic criteria. But at least probably 55 to 60 percent of the increase is unexplained, which leads us to believe that there are more individuals that actually have autism. Um, and if that is the case, then the only thing that can really explain that is environmental factors. Now, is there a silver lining to the, those numbers if there might be one in the fact that now on this seventh year for Autism Awareness Day, we're talking about it and 10 years ago we were not? Absolutely. One of the things that myself and many other people have been talking about is just trying to raise awareness um, of these numbers and that they're increasing. I mean, you can't go anywhere now, really, where there isn't a family or somebody that's impacted by autism, where even 10 years ago, very few people ever saw anybody that was autistic or had autism. Now it impacts every aspect of the life. And if you really go into the schools and speak with teachers, I mean, this is a real issue. And there are more people that have this. And we really need to be looking at it, especially if environmental factors are driving it, which means that we might be able to prevent it. Um, and we may be able to also reverse this in many cases. When you say environmental factors, what environmental factors are we talking about? Yeah, there are a wide variety. In my book, I identified what we call risk factors, and really that's what we're talking about, things that elevate the risk of somebody having uh, a chance of having a child with autism or some other disability. Um, many of them are what we call lifestyle, so things like diet, exercise, or lack of exercise, or spending a lot of time in front of screen time, stress hormone levels. But there's a, there's a, variety, a variety of them, like uh, the exposure to pesticides, uh, the age of the father, the age of the mother. There was just a study that came out a couple of weeks ago showing that fathers over 46 um, have an elevated risk of having a child with autism of 300% over another male that's 24 years old. We know women over 35. We know looking at the overall health of the mother and the father. So things like obesity, diabetes, uh, hypertension, those all elevate the risk of having a child with autism, as well as drugs, flu viruses, there's a lot of them. So what can be done to better identify autism and I guess understand what it is? Well, that's one of the areas of my research. Um, I spend a lot of time really trying to understand what's happening in the brain, because if we don't really understand what autism is in the brain, then we really can't understand what's causing it or really how to treat it or potentially prevent it. So what our research has been able to show is that the problem is really with what we call functional connectivity in the brain, where certain areas of the brain are just not talking to one another and there seems to be a developmental delay specifically in the right side of the brain in certain areas that relate to nonverbal social communication and repetitive behaviors but it doesn't just restrict, restrict itself to the brain it also affects the body we know that there are digestive issues there are immune issues there are nutritional problems so there uh, there's a lot of things that really come into play and when we start to understand what's happening to the brain, then we understand that we can do things that might be able to improve this connection between areas of the brain, that it's not a permanent damage, and that uh, much research has shown that in many cases and people can completely recover from autism symptoms. And we can only pray. Dr. Robert Milello, he is a neurologist, and he joins us this morning from Dallas, Texas. Doctor, thank you very much.